Leaving Cert History students, this is part three of our look at US economic history, and we're going to be focusing on globalization and demographic growth. Globalization refers to the worldwide spread of trade and commerce by multinational corporations. Goods, services and culture have become increasingly similar around the world. Companies like McDonald's and Coca-Cola were part of the Americanization of the world. English became the most studied second language in schools and universities throughout the world. As American goods became more popular around the globe, anti-American feeling developed in some countries where people resented the decline of their native culture and way of life. A global trade system was developed. The IMF or the International Monetary Fund was established to promote international cooperation. The World Bank provides loans for development programs. In 1947, the General Agreement of Tariffs and Trade began reducing tariffs on goods. Supporters of globalization have argued that increased world trade was helping to reduce poverty and that multinational companies employed local people and improved the skills of the workforce. Critics of globalization have argued that US corporations invested in poorer countries to make a greater profit by paying lower wages. They've also argued that the spread of American culture was at the expense of native cultures and that globalization was a new form of imperialism, so larger countries controlled the economy of weaker ones. All right, so let's chat about demographic growth. Post-war America saw rapid growth of population and its geographic distribution became a key feature. In 1940, the population was 131 million. By 1980, the population was 226 million. After World War II, there was an increased birth rate from 3.5 million births in 1947 to 4.3 million births in 1960. This was coupled with a decline in the death rate due to better food and improved medicine, for example, penicillin and the polio vaccine. The US population also grew as a result of immigration. Between 1940 to 1980, 11 million immigrants came to the United States. Many refugees came from Europe after World War II, from Hungary after the rising of 1956, and from Cuba after Castro took over, all in a search of security and a piece of the American dream. In 1965, New immigration laws allowed people with special skills to enter the United States. The age structure of the United States also changed. There were more younger and older people. The teen market or Pepsi generation fueled the consumer boom of the 1950s and 60s. Increased numbers of older people meant there was greater federal spending on health and welfare. There was also greater mobility of the population. People moved from cities to the suburbs, from the countryside to cities. By 1960, over 60% of the population lived in cities. This increased to 75% by 1980. The farm population dropped from 7 million in 1935 to less than 2 million in 1980. Within cities, people moved from the inner city to the suburbs. Vast new estates like Levittown and Long Island were built, and black people were not allowed to buy there. The population of suburban areas grew by 35 million. Many people saw the suburbs as a threat to individualization. Quote, Suburbs are small, controlled communities where, for the most part, everyone has the same living standards." End quote. By 1960, a quarter of Americans were living in a different state to the one that they were born in. Many moved to California for work, especially in tech industries, and to Florida for the sun. Many black people living in southern states moved north, for example, Washington DC was three quarters white in 1940, but then three quarters black by 1970. 
Racial differences also came to play here. As many black people moved to the cities, um, whites then moved to the suburbs.